Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the decisive day of semi-finals uh, Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020. Daniel Dubov is already in the final um, and Daniel won against Ding Lir and I showed that game already on my channel. Uh, however, Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura won one mini match. Um, each of them won one, so there is a 1-1 one -one score between them and uh, they have to play today this decisive uh, match. So we have four games uh, and uh, in the first game uh, it was a draw. Uh, in the second game Hikaru Nakamura won. Uh, he had a very nice you know home preparation against Magnus Carlsen Berlin defense uh, and he won that game. Uh, and Magnus Carlsen now this is the game number three uh, has to win this game or another he has to win uh, but this game he plays as white so um, definitely this is the last game where he play as white so this is a good chance uh, to to win and this is actually must win for for Magnus so without further ado let's see what happened on the board uh, we have d4 by Magnus knight on f6 by Hikaru Nakamura c4 e6 uh, knight on f3 d5 so queen's gambit declined nothing fancy but the positions usually are very rich uh, in ideas so we have knight on c3 bishop on e7 and bishop f4 and magnus likes to play you know harvitz attack with the bishop on f4 this bishop is pretty annoying similar like in the london system uh, but white have very 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 active gameplay here uh, we have castle by hikaru nakamura e3 knight beyond d7 and now bishop e2 uh, d takes on c4 uh, and now instead of taking the the, the pawn a uh, castle by Magnus Carlsen and in this position black have couple of options so a6 is the main line here c5 is possible you know attacking the center uh, knight on d5 also is possible harassing the bishop attacking the knight uh, these options were played plenty of times knight on b6 by nakamura also was played but it's you know quite some sideline defending c4 but very temporary because um, this pawn actually cannot be defended so queen on c2 and this position was rich by anish giri and levon aronian in 2012 uh, and there levon aronian goes for the bishop this is london uh, bishop which can be attacked this way so whenever you played it h3 usually is a great idea Idea here uh, but here Anish Giri found very interesting continuation he played bishop on e5 weakened the, the pawn structure and after f6 he didn't go back to g3 he played knight on g5 what the move watch watch at this uh, queen is attacking and threatening the checkmate there so uh, black doesn't have a choice you know what to take uh, and of course after taking the knight bishop takes on h5 and it's pretty good position for white uh, uh, this game was lost by Anish Giri, uh, but very nice, you know, home preparation, very nice idea uh, just in the opening. But after queen on c2, Hikaru Nakamura uh, didn't go for knight on h5 and he played knight f on d5. So uh, as you see, the ideas are very, very similar in this opening. Uh, however, uh, the moves are switched and sometimes it can be, you know, very tricky in the openings. Uh, we have bishop on g3 by Magnus Carlsen and now c5. So all of these ideas are, you know, um, present in this in this game. We have d takes on c5, bishop takes on c5. Uh, and now rook f on d1 pinning the knight so um, you know the queen is behind so uh, Hikaru Nakamura have to be careful here we have bishop on d7 now blocking them the open file uh, and now knight on e5 attacking this bishop uh, we have rook on c8 rook a on c1 uh, and now knight on b4 harassing the queen uh, and now what to do queen on b1 is quite natural move and, and it's it's very good move however magnus carlsen have to win this game so he goes for queen on e4 much more active move actually threatening to take on b7 okay this is the main threat here but also the position is is very very complicated as as you see this rook uh, pins the bishop the bishop is attacked by the knight this bishop also makes the things more difficult controlling uh, c7 and b8 
and uh, it's really complicated. So uh, what Hikaru Nakamura did, he retreated with the knight to d5. So now he blocking this diagonal and this uh, open file. Uh, and we have queen on f3. Queen on f3, very silent move, however, very important move, because now the queen still stays on this diagonal, but also e4 is possible e4 is possible the knight will have to move uh, and now this pin gonna be uh, real so uh, what's the point so for example queen on e7 which makes sense because it's gonna defend b7 uh, and then knight d7 of course not queen on d7 because of e4 and that's uh, and that's you know exchanging the queen but uh, not in favor of course of uh, for black so uh, that would be much better for white just winning position but rather knight on d7 uh, and then knight on d5, uh, e takes on d5, queen takes on d5, and after knight on b6, uh, queen has to retreat. Uh, this pawn gonna fall very soon, and uh, white gonna have one extra pawn and more, more, much more comfortable game with the pair of bishop. So uh, queen on e7, as you see, not, not really great. What engine recommends actually is knight on c3 knight on c3 and after rook takes on c3 uh, queen on e7 knight d7 knight d7 and queen on b7 and this pawn gonna fall so uh, white gonna have extra pawn pair of bishops so much more comfortable play so hikaru nakamura wanted to avoid all of that and he uh, wanted to really complicate the things and magnus was quite low on time so why not so we have bishop on a4 which is not really great move but in this particular situation why not uh, we have knight takes on a4 knight takes on a4 and what is the idea to exchange uh, two knights for for the rook but also winning two pawns uh, so we have e4 uh, attacking the knight knight on b2 knight is of course pinned as you see so knight on b2 is the idea attacking this attacker on d1 e takes on d5 knight takes on d1 rook takes on d1 and now uh, e takes on d5 so it looks so good so far hikaru has you know four pawns storming on the queen side uh, and it's only you know rook for for two pieces so why not uh, however the problem is magnus has now bishop takes on c4 winning the pawn of course this pawn is pinned uh, and now it's attacked three times so uh, queen on e7 and bishop on d5 so after losing these two pawns uh, the situation isn't as bright as it was you know just two moves before uh, we have bishop on d6 and here actually it's very interesting position uh, because this knight is actually attacked twice uh, and there are some complications what would you play in this position actually uh, you can pause the video and try to figure out what would you play in this position so uh, knight on f7 would be the most clear and elegant way to win the pawn this is just simply winning the pawn okay bishop on f7 uh, and now this bishop is attacked twice okay uh so uh, bishop on g3 uh, and now knight e5 with check that's just that's just the most simple way and after king on h8 just queen g3 as the queen was under attack and now the knight is protected and everything is fine what white achieve is you know uh two pieces for the rook which uh, which of course is better for for white so this would be the most clear elegant and not complicated way however magnus went for different line and he played bishop on f7 attacking the king uh, and here hikaru could go with the with the rook for example take rook on f7 which would not be so bad because after knight on f7 bishop g3 white would have to find the only move still winning in the position of course h takes on g3 uh, is just a draw queen on f7 and this would be just a draw in the rook endgame uh, so white would have to play knight on h6 okay knight on h6 and now h takes on g6 winning this way because now uh winning the rook so here is the idea of course winning the rook is uh is definitely the best for for white 
Uh, or uh, king on h8, but it's still winning because knight f5 winning the the, the minor piece. So uh, bishop on f2, uh, queen f2, queen f6, knight e3, let's say, and uh, the game can continue. But extra piece, of course, is enough to win the game. So uh, this could happen, but Hikaru uh, want to complicate the things, of course. So king on h8, and now again, Magnus still have to uh, find the best move. And you can actually practice. What would you play? now because it's not so so clear rook on d6 is one of the correct answers but it's not the best one uh, queen on h5 this is the move now uh, defending the bishop twice defending the knight twice uh, and also they are attacked twice okay so and there are no tactical tricks here you know like overworked piece uh, and anything so this was the only move the point is you have to be very precise so we have bishop on e5 and now uh, not bishop on e5 because of course that that would be that would be actually winning for for black with the extra exchange so so that would be winning for black but rather bishop on g6 this is the move which white uh, played of course so magnus carlsen played bishop on g6 and now h6 uh, and here bishop e5 and now it's the problem uh, what to play now because queen on h6 uh, is you know a very serious threat you're gonna get checkmated and also if you try for example move the king to g8 to you know go out from the pin uh, this pin uh, then bishop can go to d6 and skewer the queen and win the exchange so with the extra piece of course is winning so hikaru was forced to play queen on g5 we have queen on g5 h takes on g5 and now h4 this is definitely winning for magnus but it still requires some technique so uh we're gonna see how the players play that we have pair of bishop against the rook so let's see rook on c5 now attacking the bishop so bishop on b2 rook on b5 still harassing bishop on a3 now attacking this rook rook on c8 and now h5 solidifying the position of the bishop on g6 and also uh keep in mind that the the eight rank weakness is on the board now so hikaru you know cannot just move the rook because he gonna get checkmated on the eight rank we have rook on a8 attacking the bishop bishop b2 rook on a2 winning that pawn rook on d2 defending the bishop and now king on g8 uh, bishop on b1 kicking the the rook from the from the a2 and now rook on a we have rook on d7 now getting to the seven rank uh, and look at this this looks really really bad uh, for black so rook on b5 now attacking the bishop actually both of the bishops so it looks like black gonna win the material uh, however we have bishop on a2 with check king on h7 and now bishop on g7 so now the bishops are not under attack and still uh, black gonna do some discoveries but there are no good discoveries in this position we have g4 by hikaru nakamura and bishop on e5 uh, king on h6 now bishop on f4 uh, king on h5 bishop f7 checking king h4 and here king h2 so g3 threatening the checkmate so we have uh, g3 by hikaru nakamura making a space for the king um, f takes on g3 uh, king on g4 and now bishop e6 with check and also it's almost it's almost you know fork on the rook uh, but after uh, king on h5 we have rook on h7 with check now the rook is under attack king on g6 rook on h6 with check king g7 and after rook on c8 hikaru nakamura resigned the game so we have won one after three games and the fourth games ended in the draw that means we had armageddon and in armageddon hikaru nakamura chose the black pieces so he just needed to draw and i'm gonna show you this game pretty soon so stay tuned and if you don't want to miss it press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one